Hey, how everybody doing today? Everybody doing all right? Well, we are glad. Yes, 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 yes. Woo, I love it. We are glad to be in the Gaston Emanuel location. Uh, really sad. And it's a beautiful building. This is my first time being in this one. We pulled up. I said, we're at a church. <laughs> uh, I am honored. I am more than honored to teach you guys. Uh, I don't take it lightly at all to teach you guys. Uh, uh, even the driving, me and my wife talk, who's flying to get here. Uh, no apologies on my fault. Uh, I don't know if y'all come out of hustle based on the traffic. We should have took off earlier, so I apologize for that. I'm an on-time person. I am an on-time person. But I got through that traffic and got here, and we're going to do our time. But uh, on behalf of uh, Doc Rock, hey, Doc Rock, how you doing now? Uh, we down here. We're ready to have a good time. To my guys who I danced against, uh, even though the crowd said y'all won, I really believe I won. And I'll be honest with y'all, I was hurting after doing the worm and all that stuff, but it was so much fun. So thank y'all guys. I appreciate it. But I do have a word from God today, and uh, I do it in the 30 minutes. Uh, what I'm going to talk about is real, real, real simple. If you have your Bibles, uh, you can turn into uh, first, first uh, uh, Samuel chapter 17, 29 through 35. First uh, Samuel chapter 17, 29 through 35. And I will be using the subject, when you know your value, when you know your value. I want to talk about how valuable, valuable Emmanuel, the Gaston location is. And you guys are very, very valuable. Very, very valuable. And I want to talk about that. So I'm going to read, I'm going to read and I know we've got about three different Bibles people reading out of, but I'm going to read across some of it, uh, starting at 1 Samuel 17, 29, 35. And the reason is this, the 29th, it's in David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? And he turned from his, and he turned from him towards another, and spoke at the same manner. And to the people answer him again at a former manner. And, 31, and when the word were heard with David spoke, they rehearsed it before him, Saul, and sent, him for, and sent for him. And David said to Saul, let no man hard fail because of him. Thy servant will go up and fight against the Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able against the fight to Philistine, and thou art, art or die as a youth, and a man of war is your youth. What in better words he was saying, you was young. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came lions and bears. Oh my, that ain't in there though. And took his lamb out the flock. And when I, when I went after him and spoke to him or heard him or spoke to him with a, with a rod, I delivered out of the mouth. And went across again. I caught him by his beard and I spoke to him or I hit him again and slew him. What I want to talk about real quick tonight to the gas location is when you know your value. And I got three points. Success requires no apology. And value requires no friends. Success requires, requires no apology. And value requires no friends. When you're looking to be success, you don't have to apologize to nobody. When you know you are valuable, you don't have to have friends. Because when you become successful and know you're valuable, people want you to apologize for how you feel, and also they want you to b become your friend. Value mean what? Worth. One judge of what is important. One judge is what is important. Value mean worth. You have to know exactly what you are worth. No matter what people say. Right in here, uh, one of the facts you must have confidence. I like this. You must have confidence. God confidence. And it, God had so much confidence. I love this. God has so much confidence. God is an is a, is a, is amazing God. God has so much confidence in himself. He took stars in the moon and other, and other planets and just slung them in the sky. He, didn't, he had so much confidence that they was going to stay. Two thousand years later, they still there. He, 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 he wasn't worried about it. Was he going to fall? He wasn't worried about it. He literally just took him and shrugged him into nothing. And he had so much confidence that he was God that they would stay. That is the same type of confidence you must have when you come successful. When you know you value, I know you might not slay the, the, scar, the stars in the sky, but you got to have confidence knowing that God got your back. What is confidence? Knowing you can do it when you know you cannot do it. <laughs> what is confidence? Knowing you can do it when you know you cannot do it. Most of the time we know we do some great things, but deep side we know we can't. Better words, what your confidence is doing is coming from God. 
I've been put in some situations where, honestly, guys, I, I, I knew I could, but I knew I couldn't. I knew I needed God to build my covenants. I tell people all the time, uh, uh, Doc Rock did what was right. He, he went to school as, a, as an elementary kid. He was one of the top kids from kindergarten, or first grade, one kindergarten, from first grade to fifth, he was a top kid. Doc Rock went to middle school from six to eight. The teachers loved him. Caracas Watkins' name was plastered all across middle school. Not just that, he went to high school. From the ninth to the twelfth grade, Doc Rock was known as one of the smartest African-American male in the school system. No lie, he was known. He tutored the basketball players. He tutored everybody. And if anybody was in a top science class, Doc Rock was the only black guy if you was in a group that you wanted a black guy in your group. You don't want the rest of the black guys. He did everything right. I love it. Well, come along, Brandon Watkins, from first to fifth, I don't know where I was. <laughs> Matter of fact, I was scared to carry my report card home from first to fifth. From six to eight, I could care less about anybody because they kept comparing me to my brother, so I didn't want to be in school. Right, come on, come on, I didn't even want to talk about from 9 to 12. 9 to 12, I was a hell raiser. I gave every teacher hell. I went crazy after food. And then I, I, I was so crazy, I had to stay an extra year just for the fun of it. So instead of coming out in 90, I came out in 91. So he, as Doc Rock, he had some things that was different to me. So I had no choice to make sure I had confidence in God. Wow. Yeah. I didn't have the luxury. Right. I didn't have that. I had came out of a situation that I had to have God in my life. Yeah. Some of you guys may came and did well and y'all didn't have to. And y'all made it and y'all were smart enough. And y'all, hey, that wasn't me. Right. See, so I had no choice to have confidence. I had to believe that God was going to do it because I had failed so many times. Yeah. This is getting to David to what happened to him. If you look at Saul at 1 Samuel 17, 34 through 35, it talks about David's confidence. And I won't go deep into that, but it talks about his confidence. One thing it talks about his firm, his firm, firm trust he had in himself and he had in God. Yeah. When David went to the king, the king would say, you're just a youth. You're not strong enough. And David looked at him like, wow, for real? All my punk brothers been running from this giant. All them been before me. Matter of fact, let me be real with you. When they came looking for the king, they pulled all my brothers out and didn't even think about me. Don't you know that should have hurt my feelings? But it didn't. <laughs> Sometime in your family, they'll point out everybody else, but they ain't pointing out you. You don't want to think won't succeed. You don't want to think will have success. You don't want to think it's going to fail. But you will be the one to have some value in yourself and you're going to make it to the top. That's how David felt. He had that confidence. He had firm trust in God and he had trust in himself. Also, he felt he had feelings of his self assuring arising from one, one appreciation of his ability. David knew his ability. You got to know your ability. You got to know your ability. You got to know what you can and cannot do. <laughs> y'all, we tell all the kids, oh, you can go to space. No, every kid can't go to space. We tell kids, you can be a doctor. Every kid can't be a doctor. Our three kids, Bree J, Ivan, and Brandon, we knew what they could do. I knew my son needed to major in social work. It wasn't a doubt. <laughs> I knew it. I, I knew it. I knew he wanted to be the next person that went to space, the first African American went to space. I know my child. I knew Ivy would be a VP one day. Based on her writing skills, based on what she did, we knew she would be the one to move to New York to be a VP. We knew Zora would, would lag some kind of way, come up with this crazy idea to be something that we don't want to pay for, which is what she did. She majored in something, and we paid $40,000 for a year, and she majored in something, but we knew she was going to do it. Matter of fact, when she told us what she was majoring in, what she majored in? Dr. Mary Film, she would always spell me to work well, to major in doing film. Wow. She could have stayed at home. She could have came to him and did that. So we paid forty thousand dollars for that a year. Now she landed a good job. We knew what they could do. Yeah. You have to know when you value. You got to know what you can do, yeah. and you got to know that you can do it better than anybody. 
you got to you got to have so much confidence in God, and you got to know that you are so valuable. Nobody can do it like you. I know they are comparing you, and that's fine. They can compare you, but never compare yourself. Michael Jordan says something so important: when they're going against me, I'm going against myself. You got to have so much confidence in God that you can do it. David had that confidence. Matter of fact, David had a clear head to make the right decision in life. As females, and we talk to a lot of females in here, you got to have a clear head. We're dealing with a situation, I won't call it out because this might be online, but we're dealing with a situation about home. Some individuals getting into it, and they're posting and doing situations of that. And the individual may, and y'all know how you do Facebook posts, when it's out there, it's out there. Yeah. And that night it was kind of heated, and emotion was in on the male and the female. And the male man said something he shouldn't have said. The female, she had it pretty good, said some things. Now the next day he's going back and apologize. It's two ladies out there, guys. It's, it, they say this is in the sky, and everybody getting it. Yeah. So it's the, late, it's the hottest thing in the cater right now. And they're all popular people. Now he's trying to go back and apologize. See, you got to have a clear mind at all times, guys. Don't matter what pressure's on you, because once you say what you say, people already hear what you say. You can come back and apologize, say you're sorry, I didn't mean it. David knew to have a clear mind when he went to that king. He knew to have, he knew to think right and what to say. I got to be honest with you guys, I had to learn how to have a clear mind. Everything came out of my mouth. <laughs> I blame everybody. It was always your fault, your fault, your fault. And come to find out, it was always my fault. You got to speak clear when people are talking. You got to have a clear mind. You got to have your, you got to be ready to say things which is appropriate. Which in this thing, watch this. In order to have a clear mind and speak right, it's based on your friendship. Doc said all the time, you're around five people. If you're around five crackheads, you're the sixth crackhead. That's just the reality of life. You're around five people that's make it. You're the sixth one that's going to make it. Come on. I, he said I can go right here, Marcy. He said I can go between the balls. You, you, you are the one. You have to be very conscious who you're around. And David was very conscious. Uh, there's a book out called Think and Grow Rich. Man, y'all got to get it. Who on read Think, Think and Grow Rich? Man, you got to get it. You got to get it. I read that book so much. <laughs> and I'm going to tell y'all why. And if you do not see yourself becoming rich or becoming wealthy, if you can't imagine it, you will never have that in your account. <laughs> Anybody know this sound? Beep, beep, beep. I learned this sound like 3 o'clock in the morning one night. That means they're repossessing your car. Beep, beep, whole neighborhood outside. Because <laughs> they got that light flash. I don't know if y'all ever saw that. And it's like, oh, your whole neighborhood, the whole neighborhood outside. And you know, you're embarrassed. Beep. I'm asking, man, can I just get my wallet out the car? Can I get? No, no, you haven't paid your payment. No, no, no. I had to learn. If I don't want that sound again, I got to have that on the cameras of my imagination yeah. that I would pay my bills on time. Yeah. I had to have it here. Mm -hmm. I had to make sure that the, if I value myself that much, I had to make sure I hear the sound. I won't be like I got 21 minutes. The next one, number one, number one, number one, number one, have confidence. Number two, I only got three. Number two, you must have, 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 have self-image. In better words, self-worth, self-esteem. If you read about David in, 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 uh, in 38 through 39, he had, he had them things. But if you read in Genesis 1 and 27, it said, God created man, man in his own image. Oh, I said, what? So I kind of look like God? <laughs> he created you in his own. He gave you self-worth and self-esteem. You got to have self-worth and self-esteem with confidence. Now, I tell people, don't get my, uh, my, my confidence mixed up, my, mixed up with arrogancy. You might think I'm arrogancy, and I'm fine, because if you think that, get a ticket and join the rest of the people. I'm not going to change my self-esteem and my self-worth based on you. You're not going to convince me. You're not going to change my mind how I'm acting and what I'm doing. Based on, see, because you got a value on me, too. 
You got a certain place you want me to go. Me and my wife got an opportunity to go uh, visit uh, very few islands. We was on, on Facebook, and uh, we got an opportunity to go visit islands. And we went from, from private island to private island. I have never did that before. And we visited some places that many have not visited, some names that I can't pronounce, and I saw on TV, and uh, we, we did. I, I can't. Matter of fact, I said, what's the name of this place? She'll tell me. And I said, oh, then we went to a private island. Then we went to another private island. Some people want to say, hey, y'all might need to put that, not might not put that on Facebook. Oh. So since I took a trip of that magnitude, and you ain't took a trip of that magnitude, you're going to tell me to down, the downgrade God. So, oh, you think I was looking up to you, and I wasn't. Just because you have not took that trip don't mean we can't take that trip. See, just because somebody in your family have not become a millionaire don't mean you can't become a millionaire. Just because somebody in your family have not got their doctorate degree don't mean you can't get your doctorate degree. Just because somebody in your family is not a lawyer, a teacher, a scientist, that don't mean you can't become it. See, people put things up. You got to value your doggone self. You got to have enough value and worth about yourself that you believe you can do it when nobody else don't, can believe it. You got to have it. Because if you don't have it, nobody won't. So people put you in a box. I tell people, you ain't, you ain't the ceiling breaker. I'm the ceiling breaker. I break the ceilings. And people say, how you got so much confidence? Because you don't know, little Lord. You don't know what, I ha what happened to me back in the days of my life. You don't know why I'm acting away. You don't know why I got so much confidence. You don't know why I believe where I believe. You don't know really where I want to go. If you want to go there, you got to have some values about yourself. You got to see yourself as being valuable. You got to see that God has took out time and Pacific and purposely de designated a purpose for your life. Yeah. You have to see it. He had it. Some said it. Some said you have been made in a little lower than the angels. In a crown, and he has crowned you with glory and honor. It's crazy. And I made my own slang because I got a real. This is crazy, y'all. And I made this one because I wanted to look real. David was going against Goliath with a raggedy slingshot. <laughs> Y'all got to understand, his brothers was warriors, and they was older than him. It was expected. This just a little boy chasing some sheep, y'all. And all this little boy got is a sling. He don't have a machete. He don't have a Uzi. He don't even have a sword. Matter of fact, when he put on the armor, you're going to read the whole story. When he put on the king's armor, he couldn't walk in it. He was looking like, and, and, and the king like, boy, you got a slingshot. <laughs> going against a giant, what, and boy, you stupid enough to believe that you're going to win. I got many people telling me the same thing. They said, boy, you stupid enough to believe you're going to win. Now, I'm beyond I'm stupid enough to believe that. I was sitting teasing my wife years ago, and I don't know if y'all ever saw the movie The Dig and Ditch Daughters. And the guy was uneducated, and he said one day all his eight daughters going to become a doctor. And out of eight, I think, one became a lawyer, but soon she came back and became a doctor. And he did not have said that the scope. And he just said, all of y'all going to wear scribble scrabble. <laughs> I used to go around uh, in the community and say, one day, Oh, my kids gonna wear a scribble scrabble. I wasn't talking about my kids gonna be a doctor. I was talking about my kids gonna be success in college. And they looked at me and said, Man, you, you know, it was hard for you. One day, all my kids gonna wear a scribble scrabble. I said, One day, every child, all my kids in my house, my three kids, they're gonna go off to college. They're gonna graduate in four years. They're not gonna stand up for six and seven like I did. My son gonna go off and get his master's. They said, No, no. Do you realize what color you are? Do you know you black? Do you know you're talking about doing, you're talking about taking three kids, saying they're going to go through college for four years to correct time, get out of college and get a job and become successful. You are not going to wear a scribble scrapper. <laughs> but I had so much confidence and I actually got it in Gaston. I was down here teaching a youth revival at some church down here. And after I got through preaching, I sit down in almost a depression. And one of the pastors walked up to me. He said, you are worried about your kids going to college. And at that time, my kids probably was in the seventh or eighth grade. He said, God have just told me, never worry about your kids going to college. I got up that night <laughs> and told everybody my kids go wear scribble scrabble. <laughs> 
And what was that? He gave me confidence to believe that my kid's going to do it. You got to have that type of confidence. You say, well, hold on. The only two people that graduated from college you your family was you and your brother. I love that story. Now, me, my brother, my kids, his kids, and now more kids, and more people in my family are going back to college now. The, pe- the, the Watkins that was degraded. Now we got these, these thug, no good Watkins. Saw the mean Doc Rock did it. Now they sending their kids to college. Now my aunties are going back and get their, uh, uh, they look GDs in high school. Now my family like, what? Since y'all, let me tell you something. You might be the one to motivate your family. You might be the one to start. The, you got to have some confidence in yourself. We tripping out now. And they said, you send your kids to a, uh, HBCU. You can send your kids to a PWI, that's fine. But I decided to send mine to HBCU. They was like, it really ain't to see you. I don't say that. It's what God got him. So David, I'm about to wrap up. So he got a ragless slain going against a giant. Man, what is your ragless slain? What happened? What you got like this that people are looking at and look broke? <laughs> What's in your life broken? And you, 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 you tell them, I'm going to win with this. And they laughing at you. <laughs> Do you not know who your family is? Your family is nobody. <laughs> Are you saying that because it's slain I got? Uh, Brandon, it ain't even unique put. It's not made out of wood. How you got confidence in something so flimsy? <laughs> see, 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 you don't know it's something in this slain. And his name is G-O-D. See, you only see the slang, but you don't see the God that's in this slang. Matter of fact, I really don't have confidence in this slang. I really got confidence in God. I just need to show God by faith, by taking a regular slang, believing God can be successful. I don't know. Maybe God had my life regularly for a reason. Maybe he made me go through these situations for a reason. Maybe I want an A student for a reason. So I can tell kids, you ain't got to be an A student to make six figures. You can make it up as the time come. God will give you the ability, the mindset. I know y'all think, I ain't know where I'm going to win. David's sitting there, and I got about 15, my last one. He's sitting there and says, Saul, he takes off the armor, which would everybody see him win and win. Yes. They have sit and saw how they win. He, he staggered and said, I can't win it. He said, I just need this. Saul kind of looked at him, I'll be honest with y'all, and like, boy, you're going to die. <laughs> Have you ever told your uh, dream to people and they look at you like, <laughs> uh, you, ain't, you, you, you know you can't do that. People do, man, when you tell them what you believe in and, and it's beyond what they want, they'll look at you like you're not successful. Hey, let her hit this so I can see the time right quick. I can't see it. They'll look at you like you're not successful. You have to believe it. I got one more point. I'll make sure I stay on my time. One is have confidence. Two, you must have self-image or you must have self-worth. Thank you. You must have great self-esteem in yourself. My last one in, in, in my minutes, and I give the A's in them. David groomed himself. This is dealing with his self-image. David thought positive. He, act, he, he acted positive, and he killed negativity thoughts. Y'all heard Doc Rock say it all the time. I think it's 65,000 negative thoughts go to your head a day, something like that. <laughs> If y'all listen to Doc Rock all the time, Doc Rock is always a positive person. He always said no bad days. Bad minutes, bad hours, but no bad days. I know some of y'all think he's crazy, but you need to work on it. You always got to think positive. I'm always positive at all times. I talk about how my daughter had cancer. I had to be positive. Matter of fact, they told us when our daughter was dealing with cancer, they said, y'all got to be happy. He said, happiness is going to help her. They didn't tell us she was going to live. They said, y'all just got to be happy. In the midst of them saying she, we got to be happy to help her, they still saying she's going to die. How do you be happy when they ain't saying she's going to live, but they say happy just going to let her have a nice life yes. to, to cancel, to take her out? Yes. They said, so you telling me, <laughs> you want me to be happy? <laughs> you put an unfairious slain in my hand telling me that my dog got cancer. A kind of cancer when they cut her open is going to spread anywhere. And you saying you got to cut her open, so, 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 but you're asking me to be happy. 
Now, 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 y'all, now y'all got to be. And then, top it off, you gave me a doctor who didn't believe in God. So he told me straight forward, he told us, I do not believe in your God. And he, let, he, said, he said, I can see you're praying, man. <laughs> he said, but I want you to know I'm the best, though. So now, and now we're right. Now I have an unfurious slang about my daughter, and I'm facing a giant, and they asked me, Was I happy? I was so happy. Wow. I come to the hospital, and she get her chemo skipping. It's going to be a good day up in here. Other kids, how you doing, young man? How you doing? We come to, we was known, the Watkins family, we come to, I think it was six or nine. We, it was one of the things. We, got, we, eight, we come up the hall skipping. How y'all skipping your daughter getting chemo? Because one day this ain't going to be like this. We, the people around us start getting happy. We start being known as a happy family that comes to get chemo. They're like, are y'all crazy? Well, we got inferior equipment, but we got a powerful God. See, we know the outcome of this. We know she's going to be the one y'all talk about down the line that she's cancer free. We already believe in this. In the craziness, we believe one day she's going to be cancer free. So about a few days ago, September the 12th, oh uh, yeah, her 12th anniversary. She's been cancer free for 12 years. I'm not telling y'all nothing that I ain't been in. I'm telling you the confidence that I hate. I knew I had a regular slang, but I wouldn't put it down. I didn't care what they said. I was going to skip and be happy. I had, I had positive thoughts. I thought highly about it. I, I believed God was going to do it. I had trusted. Even when people said God wouldn't do it, I still believed God was going to do it. My last point in eight minutes. My one was, my whole thing is, when you know that you are valuable. My first one is have confidence. My second is, you must have a self-image about yourself. My last one, you must have self-control. You must have self-control. 42. Yeah. First Samuel 17 and 42. It says, he looked at David over. And saw that he was a little more than a boy. <laughs> Glowing in his health and his handsomeness and despised him. And he said to David, this is a giant. I am a dog that come at you. That come, and you come at me with a stick. And the Philistine cursed David God. He came and heard what he said. He said, I will give your flesh to the birds into the wild animals. David had self-control. If you read that scripture, it never said David move or shook in fear. You got to remember his brothers and everybody else was running. One of the highest estate for David, he was going to get the money and he was going to get the girl. David didn't even want the girl. So he had watched his brothers and all the other people run from this giant or heard they ran because when he came up, he, he had heard they was running from this giant. He comes to David and tell him, I'm, David got so much self-control. It's like being at work <laughs> and somebody get on your nerves and you got the opportunity to cuss them out. And you just said, today ain't the day for me to cuss you out. <laughs> He, he, I want to do it now. I ain't got to say it. It's in my new book. <laughs> That's the day you cast down every imagination that something's ever get the knowledge of. It's like, it's, it's like being at Walmart. And you see the people in line, and I not to knock nobody, and they got groceries on top of groceries, and all of this candy. And you know they ain't work like you. You know they ain't working like you. They got their blue card. You got what I ain't knocking you. And you don't work all day. And you can't buy all them groceries what they buying. They ain't even buying good food for the kids. They buying debit cakes and snacks and cereal. And you know it. And you look at your car and you swiping. And you want to tell them you need to get a job like me. But you don't see it. Being in traffic. And you had a long day at work. Somebody cut you off and then shoot you a bird. And you want to turn that car around and say, I know I can whoop you. <laughs> I know, no, I know I can win. I know, oh, 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 it's like, it's, it's like, you know a teacher can win school or individual is, 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 is picking on your child on purpose. You know in your spirit they're doing it. You, you know, oh, you work with them, you know it's an individual doing it and you want to go confront them and tell them about your kid. <laughs> 
your child came home crying about the situation. And, 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 and your son, and your child is not always telling the truth, but you know the teacher. <laughs> so you call her, you call the parent, you know. You know, you know, you know, and you call as a parent. You're not cussing. You're calling, and, and you know, because I deal with this on my job. And and, and said me, you call me, and I just go off on you. <laughs> this one, your love child. This one took 24 hours to go in labor. This one, unique. Matter of fact, he ain't your bad child. He the one that's quiet and peaceful. He really don't do nothing. <laughs> But you calm down with self-control. And you teach your kids. It's the way you talk to teachers. Tell her respect. Last one and I end when I talk to self-control. It's like going over family for a family dinner. And the one that's doing everything from selling drugs and smoking weed, stealing purse and everything, walks in the house and they about to him. Everybody brag on him. You don't get your life to Christ. You're trying to do right. No, you're not driving the latest car because you know he or she getting it wrong. No, you're not dripping in Louis Vuitton or Gucci. But he's coming home giving them what they want. You might not be blessing your parents with that, but you're giving your best. You might take them out for a dinner. You might tell them you love He never, she never tells them she loved mom or grandma at all. Matter of fact, he done blew up, but he's been taking all his life. And you get to the family gathering. Because they think you're the black sheep in the family. And whenever you talk about what you're going to do, they don't even listen. You talk about your church, your ministry, and what you've been taught. And they said things like you've been a fool giving your money to the man of God. And they understand you're not even giving your money to the man of God, especially not ours, because he make enough. You're giving your money to the kingdom so God can bless. But you like David. You, you, you don't shake. And I'm wrapping up in my three minutes. You keep that slang, guys. Even though they think it's one inferior equipment. One thing about us African Americans, it's all up in here. We have always been given inferior equipment. They never gave us. We really didn't want to join together. That's what my little king was saying. He said, I, we ain't got to join the other race. We just want the books y'all got. We just want the knowledge, y'all got. It's, it's, we have always been given a fit. Matter of fact, y'all remember when they gave grandma a pig and said, we're not going to give you the leg, the thigh, but we're going to give you the intestine. And grandma figured out some kind of way to get all that milk and muck out of them chitlins. And, uh, grandma knew how to boil them for a long time. I know the house was smelling, but by the time we got that hot sauce and mustard and we mixed it all together. Say, so even the day when you go to New York, it's a gourmet meal. Mom, grandma took a sling. <laughs> You don't, you, 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 you don't put down the slang. You use it for confidence. David knew it. David had five smooth slang songs. Took one and perfectly hit the giant in the head. I like it. He could have stopped. Lean over the giant and cut that head off with his sword. Went back to the king. Look. I don't know if y'all, and y'all females in here, have went and saw the movie, Woman King. You better go see it. I'm a man, but boy, she a woman king. She was going to remind you of what David done. And I weigh in it in my minute. They didn't think that she had the ability to be the king. They looked at her as she was inferior, and she couldn't be a warrior. <laughs> but she knew how valuable she was. <laughs> she was showing her scars. She was showing how she had got raped. She was showing that what she went through, and she was showing the females, it's not going to stop me. So when she went against anybody, she let them know, when you get in this army, if you want to be with me, you got to know how valuable you are. They was coming in, she had rules and regulations. She said, if you can't abide by them, you can leave now. A couple left, but a lot stayed. As she's giving out these rules, and I won't tell the story, it's one particular person that was in there that she was giving rules to, she would have never known. You never know who's watching you. 
She had one percentage person that was watching her. She didn't know. She got to the end. And when she found out this person was watching her, and she connected with this person, this woman became a woman king. She was fearless. She would take you out. She said to one guy, as I end in seven seconds, she said to one guy, she said, I will go and take revenge. David knew that, guys. You got to know that. You got to know how much you're valuable. You got to know how important you are in life. Don't put down the slime. When you know your values, you stand like Doc Rock said, with your chest out. You put the S on your chest. And Brandon Watson will watch you fly through the, I watch you and I watch you. And we'll sit and enjoy you. And when you come down, just do me one favor. Just be a king with a common touch. God bless y'all guys. God bless your life. To Emmanuel, connection and gas. We had a powerful and exciting time. When you know your value, your value. God bless, God bless, God bless.